Hey guys, we are back today with another Truck History video. Today on Truck History Episode 6, we are talking about the history of Western Star trucks and bringing you up to date on these star-studded semi-tractors. So, let's get started. In 1967, White Motor Company started the Western Star Division as White Western Star with a new plant in Kelowna, British Columbia, and headquarters in Cleveland, Ohio. Production of Western Stars begins the same year in Canada with the 4900 to serve the needs of the logging, mining, lumber, and oil industries. These trucks were built with a large square hood and featured the White Western Star logo. Following the success of the company's first release, the 4900, in 1971 they began production of their second model, the 4800. This new series of trucks featured a shorter bumper to back of cab length, which was highly requested at the time to increase maneuverability. Next in 1979, Western Star introduces the High Cabover. Based on the White Cabover, Slight modifications were made including a bigger, beefier cab and new, specialized Western color schemes. Big changes came in 1981 when White Motor Company was bought out by Volvo. These changes led to the birth of the company we know now as Western Star Trucks. Around this same time, demand for Western Star Trucks began to explode worldwide and distribution begins in the Middle East, Asia, South America, and Australia. In 1983, following huge success as well as demand in the Australian market, Western Star opens a truck division, Down Under. Throughout the early 1980s, Western Star began taking note of the shift in the industry towards more long and tall sleepers, and in 1984 they released their 60-inch raised stand-up sleeper. In 1986, the Super Tilt Hood was introduced as a response to customer reports regarding the difficulty of engine accessibility. The Super Tilt Hood allowed drivers to work on their hood without taking it off entirely, allowed much easier access to the motor, and made for much easier maintenance. 1988 brought the new Cornerstone chassis, which was created to be the platform on which future Western Star models would be based. This new chassis allowed for changes in wheelbase, frame rails, and was designed to be much more nimble than previous models. Additionally, the chassis' lighter weight helped reduce the cost of the truck. This same year, Western Star releases their first series of medium-duty trucks, the 3800 series. These 3800 series trucks featured a shorter bumper to back of cab length and an aero hood. Referred to as the Ugly Duckling by some, this truck was built in response to the industry leaning towards a more aerodynamic look. In 1989, the 6900 series debuts as the biggest, baddest truck Western Star has ever offered and was able to move up to 40 tons on its quadruple frame rails. Built with a heavier hood, bigger axles, and a severe duty cab, this truck is known for its durability and ruggedness. 1989 also brought the 5900 Aero Tractor series with a full roof fairing, sleeper side shields, chassis side fairings, and aero headlights. Although built as an aero truck, the 5900 still appeared to be much more masculine than other aerodynamic models of the time. In 1991, Terry Peabody purchases Western Star Trucks Company. Peabody was a distributor in Australia for Western Star and had big plans for the company. Two years later, in 1993, the LSVW, which stands for Light Support Vehicle Wheeled, was introduced for use in the Canadian military. Western Star worked cooperatively with the Canadian military to build and distribute the LSVW. Under their agreement, the LSVW would be customized by Western Star specifically to meet the necessary military requirements. Unfortunately, this model was not very successful and had quite a few issues. In 1996, Western Star releases the new full-size Constellation cab built for the growing owner-operator industry. Featuring an all-welded steel cab crafted with the lighter gauge material that reduced overall weight, the Constellation cab brought a new, unique look to Western Star trucks. The new cab offered more space for the driver and increased maneuverability within the cab. Another big year for Western Star happened in 1997 with the first introduction of their 4900 EX model. 
The 4900EX was the first long or extended hood rig released by Western Star. Throughout the 90s, there was a big push within the industry to further improve driver living conditions. In response to this, Western Star released their Starlight Sleeper in 1998. These new sleepers were made of a lightweight composite polypropylene honeycomb material with a aluminum cladding on both sides. Not only did this new sleeper reduce overall weight, but its durable material provided excellent insulation properties. Also in 1998, Western Star released the 3700 Solar for those drivers who operated both Class 8 and Class 7 trucks in hopes to penetrate both markets. However, the 3700 Solar was overwhelmingly disliked and did not do very well. On a lighter note, at the turn of the century in 2000, Daimler Chrysler buys the Western Star brand and opens the door to a wide range of corporate support, engineering, technology, and more. In 2002, production was moved from Kelowna to a plant in Portland, Oregon. Later that same year, the quintessential Western Star owner-operator model, the Lomax 4900EX, was introduced. With its long hood and 5-inch lowered cab covered in chrome and lights, the Lomax quickly became the go-to owner-operator Western Star rig. In 2003, Western Star released their largest sleeper ever with the 82-inch Stratosphere sleeper. With its release, it allowed Western Star to be able to offer the largest range of sleepers within the industry, as well as the industry's very first walkthrough sleeper. Western Star broadened that range again in 2006 and offered 34, 40, 54, 68, and 82-inch sleepers, as well as four different size rooftop lengths. 2011 brought the introduction of the 4700 model, a truck very popular amongst government municipal customers for its great turning radius, 9-liter engine availability, and affordability. Originally intended for use as a straight truck in construction settings, it was also built for use as a semi-tractor. Four years later, in 2015, the 5700 XE model is introduced by Western Star as the first truly fuel-efficient truck released by the company. Maintaining the edgy, traditional styling while also accommodating aerodynamic improvements, the 5700 XE truck maximizes efficiency and performance without sacrificing the rugged look and appeal of an owner-operator truck. The 5700 XE truck becomes one of Western Star's most popular trucks with its appearance in the blockbuster movie Transformers The Last Knight as leading Autobot Optimus Prime. Humans have asked us to play by their rules. Well, the rules have just changed. The film also features a Western Star 4900EX wrecker. The overwhelmingly positive response to the specialized Optimus Prime truck launched Western Star to a new level of success. As demand for Western Star trucks increased, another plant was built in Cleveland, North Carolina in May of 2015. The addition of this East Coast branch allowed Western Star to better position themselves and distribute trucks to their customers. Lastly, in 2017, Western Star celebrated their 50th anniversary of truck manufacturing. Western Star models 4700, 4800, 4900, and 6900 trucks are still manufactured today at the Portland plant. On the other hand, the 4700, 4900, and 5700 XE models are all still being manufactured today at the Cleveland, North Carolina plant. That brings you up to speed on Western Star Trucks, folks. We hope you enjoyed this journey back in time with the history of Western Star Trucks. Thank you so much for watching episode six of Truck History. Be sure to check out our other five episodes of Truck History on our YouTube channel, Jack's Chrome Shop. Also check out our other videos, including our newest series, 10 Things You Didn't Know About, as well as our 60 second truck tours and other truck show content. Also make sure you like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. This show is made possible by our online Chrome shop, Jack's Chrome. Stop by jackschromeshop.com and check out our July Freedom Sale going on through the end of this month. Save stacks when you shop at Jack's with 15 to 25% off hubcaps, fenders, bumpers, headlights, JCS apparel, posters, and so much more.
Don't forget to tune into our channel on Monday for our podcast highlights and check out the live podcast on Chrome and Steel Radio YouTube and Facebook at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. Lastly, remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack.